Hello, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna see what's useful to know when we're traveling. Let's get started right away. Hello, my name is Bridget. I'm your English teacher, and welcome to Do You Speak English? Today, we will start by looking at a house. First of all, let me explain something. There's a difference between a house and a home. Your neighbor lives in his house. Your house is your home. That's why we say, I am going at home. So I hope you understand that a home is your house. Now, let's begin. As you can see here, we have a house. We'll start with the bedroom. The bedroom is where you sleep and where you wake up in the morning. So, you have a bed. That is where you sleep. There's a pillow. That's where you put your head, on the pillow. The blanket is what you use to cover yourself. It's the blanket. So you have the pillow and the blanket in your bed. There's a window. The window is to get some fresh air. If it's a hot summer day, you open the window and you get some fresh air. Right here, we have the cabinet. The cabinet is where you will put your clothes. For instance, I would fold my sweater and put it in the cabinet. Or my shirt, I would put it in the cabinet. In this bedroom, you see there's the family pet. In this case, it's a dog. It could be a cat, but it's a dog. There's a lamp. Sometimes you like to read at night. And when you read and it's dark, you need a lamp. There's the lamp. Beside the dog, you have a little teddy bear. So we think that the boy or girl in this bedroom is pro probably young because there's a teddy bear, a toy. Okay, let's go through that again if you understand everything in the bedroom. In the bedroom we have a window, a lamp, a bed, the pillow, the blanket to cover yourself if it's cold, or you could close the window if it's cold. We have the cabinet. The cabinet is where you'll put your clothes. And there's the dog and the teddy bear. Now, let's see if you can do this. Everything in the bedroom. What is this? It's the window. The lamp. This. The bed. The pillow. The blanket the dog, teddy bear, and the cabinet to put your clothes. So this is it for the bedroom. That is where you go to sleep at night and where you wake up in the morning. Now, let's go to the living room. The living room is most likely where you relax because you've got a TV. The living room is where grandma is sitting and reading her newspaper. She's on a chair, relaxing, reading the newspaper, and maybe sometimes even watching TV. This is the living room. This is your TV. 
This is grandmother in her chair, reading the newspaper in the living room. Here we have the hall. Most of the times when you come in a house, you come in the hall. As you can see, these are stairs. And all of this is the hall. You have a little girl sitting on the stairs. Now, here we have a kitchen. This is where we prepare meals like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The daddy is cooking in the kitchen. Right here, we have the stove. That's what we use to cook. It's called a stove. This is the fridge. That's where we put the food to keep it fresh. The fridge. We go back. This is the stove. This is the fridge. All these things are in the kitchen. What is this? It's the stove. What is this? It's the fridge. What is he doing? He's cooking what looks like a pancake maybe. He's flipping a pancake. What he's using is a pan. So one more time, we've got the stove, the fridge, the cook, the pan, and the pancake. Let's see if you can do it. That's right, the stove, the fridge, the pan, the pancake, and the cook. All this happens in the kitchen. All your food comes from the kitchen. Now, on top here, we have the bathroom. The bathroom is where you want privacy. Here, we have the shower. In the morning, you wake up and you take a shower. This is the sink. And here you have your toilet bowl. So if we take a look again, this is your bathroom. This is your shower. This is your sink where the water comes out. This, well, is your toilet bowl. So let's see if you can do the things in the bathroom. What is this? It's your shower. What is this? It's your sink. And this is your toilet bowl. And right behind, you can see a towel. So if ever you go in a hotel, you probably need a towel. One more time, shower, sink, towel, and toilet bowl. Now, if you look, this is a house. If it's your house, it's a home, like home sweet home. On top here is the roof. That is the roof of your house. This house has a nice garden. And you can see someone is watering the garden. Isn't this a beautiful home? Would you like to live there? Let's take a look at numbers. Numbers are very important. If you want to go shopping, you will pay something 
they will tell you a number. If you go on vacation, you have a room number. If you want to tell time, you need to know numbers. So let's get to it. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Let's start over for the ten first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, not fifteen, fifteen, sixteen. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. It is very important from thirteen to nineteen to pronounce the teen very clearly because after you will see it's twenty, thirty. We have to make a clear difference between thirteen and 30. That's why we call a teenager a teen, because he is or she is within the ages of 13 and 19. We start from the beginning and we will go all the way through 100. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, then we continue, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, and we continue, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. This will continue up to your 90. 
So in, in the 40, we, you would have 41, 42, 43, and so on. Same thing with 70, 80, and 90. It would be 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, and 100. We will take away the sound now and see if you can do it on your own. Are you ready? I will leave you some time and I will pronounce after you. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Continue. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Thirty. Forty. Fifty. Sixty. Seventy. Eighty. Ninety. And one hundred. Let's learn how to tell time. You'll see, it's quite easy. I hope I provide the right explanation for you. Here we go, how to tell time. Here we have a clock. As you can see, I've split it in two. The side with the bigger numbers, you will say two. The side with the smaller number is past. You have the word o'clock. The word o'clock is only when you don't use words in a sentence. I'll show you after. For 15 minutes, we use the word quarter. A quarter is one-fourth, therefore 15 minutes. For the 30 minutes, we use half. As you can see, I have another quarter here. We have midnight and noon. On the next board, you will see what I mean. So, here, it's either noon or midnight. If you say 12, then you can say 12 o'clock. You cannot say noon o'clock or midnight o'clock. As soon as you use a word telling time, you do not use the word o'clock. 
So now it's either noon or midnight. In English, we also don't go past 12. So if it's 2 o'clock, it's 2 p.m. or 2 a.m. We do not go past 12. Okay, let's go to the next board. So here, when you tell time, the old-fashioned way, minutes are always first. So it would be 20 to 2. 20 to 2. There is also another way you could say it. You could say 20 before 2. So this side of the 2 would be before, and the side of the past could also be after. So, supposing it were at 10, what would the time be? It would be 10 to 2. Supposing it were here, what time would it be? It would be 25 before 2 or 25 to 2. You have the choice. The two are exactly the same, whether you use before or two. Okay, let's go to the next board. Here we have 10 past 12. We do not say 10 past 12 o'clock. We just say 10 past 12. Or you could say 10 after 12. It's up to you. And when people talk to you, they can use both as well. So supposing that you were at the four, what time would it be if the big needle were at the four? If you said 20 past 12 or 20 after 12, you are right. Let's say the big needle was on the five. What would you say? If you said 25 past 12, that is correct. And not 25 past 12 o'clock. Because you have words, you don't use a clock. So if it were on the five, it would be 25 past 12 or 25 after 12. Now, let's say the big needle were on the six. If the big needle were on the six, what would you say? You would say half past 12 or half after 12. Now, let me clear something. The only time you can say the hours first is when it's at half past because it's neither two nor past. So you could say 1230. This is the only time you can say the hour before the minutes, 1230, because it's in the middle. You could say 1230 or half past 12. Let's move to the next one. Okay. Kids don't have watches anymore. They, they don't tell time, they read time off their phones. So, most of the times, the kids will not say 20 before 2 or 25 before 3 because they're looking at the time and reading the time off their phone. So, they will say 12.30. Another example, they will say 5.48. The same thing can be said for the airport. In an airport, nobody will say 25 to 2 or 25 to 3. They will say 2.35. That's the way they tell time at the airport. So we do not say 17.48. Let's do a little exercise to see if you can tell time now. What time is it? If you said noon or midnight, you got it right. Good job. Let's go to the next one. What time is it now? 
if you said 20 to 2, you are right. Or if you said 20 before 2, you are also right. Let's go to the next one. If you said 15 before 10, you are right. If you said a quarter to 10, you are right. If you said a quarter before 10, you were also right. Is everything okay? Good job. Next board. What time is it now? It is, that's right, 10 past noon or 10 past midnight. What you do is you say either a.m. or p.m. So let's suppose we're in the afternoon right now, so it would be 10 past noon because noon is the afternoon word. Were you able to tell time correctly on all the boards? I certainly hope so. For us, right now, it's time to sign off. So until then, I'm Bridget, your English teacher, and I say, see you later. Fier de faire rayonner notre communauté.